Hi, I'm Scott from the XAT Chaps, and today we're going to be doing something quite different because today nothing will be scanned, but we are taking a trip to Grenoble, France to check out its world-class facility, the European Synchrotron Radiation Facility, or ESRF. The ESRF is a world-class X-ray research facility nestled within the beautiful Alps of Grenoble. And when we take a look inside, we see that it is a massive facility at that. And at the ESRF, we can perform similar experiments to what we do with the Nikon, experiments such as XCT. To give you an idea of how large the building itself is, I took a walk around the perimeter and it took about 11 and a half minutes. massive inspiring facility okay so i'm going to get my good friend tomo man and he's going to explain to you the wonders of the synchrotron should be just in here Hello, it's me, Tomo Man, here to explain to you the wonders of the synchrotron. Let's get started. Bestowed with the brilliance of a thousand synchrotrons, he is Tomo Man. Flying through the sky at half the speed of light, he got super strength and x-ray eyes, he's Tomo Man. Okay, so today we're going to be comparing the Nikon versus the ESRF synchrotron, just to wrap our heads around how large the synchrotron is. So at first, maybe we want to compare the area or the footprint that each of them makes. The Nikon is just a large rectangle and the synchrotron, the footprint of the synchrotron is this giant circle. And so if we measure these out and we calculate the area of each, we see that the area of the synchrotron is 37,234 times the area of the Nikon. Just to put that into perspective, the same size as eight standard football fields. With that in mind, is the synchrotron just 37,000 times better? Well, it's not a really fair comparison to just look at the size. So what if we treated them both as a light source because as we know x-rays are just another form of electromagnetic radiation or light to compare them as light sources we can look at their brilliance which are defined here as a measure of the rate of flow of photons within a particular beam size and angle across a specific range of frequencies or bandwidth this is basically how bright the light source is and this can be helpful when comparing different sources of light, like the Nikon and the ESRF synchrotron. And the units of brilliance are in photons per time, per distance squared, per angle squared, per bandwidth. In general terms, high brilliance means that we will have high flux of the x-rays, which means we can get things such as lower scan time and better resolution. And these are all good things. So higher brilliance means a better x-ray source in this case. The ESRF have provided this great graph here which plots the brilliance of different x-ray sources. The Nikon would fall down here in the x-ray tubes around 10 to the 8 as the ESRF is labeled here and it's at about 10 to the 23. So now we have a number that we can compare them in terms of brilliance and so that is 10 to the 15 times greater. The synchrotron is 10 to the 15 times greater in brilliance than the Nikon. And that is one with 15 zeros or one quadrillion. Uh, and to put that into perspective, if we had one quadrillion pieces of paper and we stack them on top of each other, that stack would reach over 60% of the distance between the earth and the sun. So that is very bright. The question now is, how could they be so different? And in order to get a, a general understanding of that, 
we'll have to look at how each one produces x-rays. So first the x-ray tube within the Nikon. We first have the generation of an electron with a tungsten filament shown here in the left. And so this will generate electrons, which are then accelerated towards a metal target, in most cases tungsten. And when the electrons hit the metal target, this is what produces the x-rays. So the x-rays are highly dependent on the atomic characteristics of the metal. There are two main sources of radiation within the metal. We have characteristic x-ray emission shown here on the top and Brennstrahlen x-ray emission on the bottom. And in both cases, you have an incident electron and the incident electron in the characteristic x-ray emission, it hits a inner shell electron and sends it out of the atom. The atom then has to relax and releases x-rays. And this is why it's called characteristic because the intensity of that x-ray is going to be dependent on the characteristics of the atom or therefore the metal. In comparison, the Brennstrahlen or breaking radiation is caused by the electron coming in and interacting with the electron cloud of the atom and being accelerated in some fashion. But when the trajectory of the electron is changed, we have the emission of Brennstrahlen radiation. Now in the ESRF synchrotron, you still have the generation of an electron in a very in a similar fashion with something akin to a light bulb. But this time the electron is going to be stored in the storage ring, which is the large circle around the entire building. And so the electron is kept within the storage ring with what are called bending magnets. And bending magnets interact with the electrons a generated magnetic field, changing the trajectory of the electron and creating again Brennstrahlen radiation. But when we have an actual experiment, this happens on a beam line which comes out from the storage ring. And to generate the x-rays in that case, we have two more insertion devices, mainly the wigglers and undulators, which work on a very similar principle to the bending magnet but induce more deviation in the electron trajectory and therefore generate more x-rays. Here we can work with a much higher energy electron because in the scenario where we're relying on the metal, the metal could eventually get way too hot and not work the same. The difference between the wiggler and the undulator is that the undulator produces a lot of x-rays, the same as the wiggler, but you can, it's a little bit more fine-tuned so that the x-rays have a similar frequency so you can have beam coherence and in all these cases this effect is called magneto Brennstrahlen effect because it's the Brennstrahlen or breaking radiation but caused by magnets so I think that the name European magneto Brennstrahlen radiation facility must have already been taken for them to stick with just synchrotron missed opportunity and that's all we have for today i hope to see you soon in the next tomoman episode